Hey, Downstater here. So today I wanted to talk to you about this beautiful machine right here. The one wheel pint from Future Motion. This uh, horribly beaten up, some would say abused version. Um, and I apologize for that. I don't tend to take very good care of my machines, but this one has uh, done a lot for me in this past year. And I wanted to make a video really showing the honest truth, the daily life with it. There's too many of these videos out there of people who are influencers who get something like this, they ride it for two weeks and uh, give you their feedback. I don't even understand how they can do that after two weeks. They don't know anything about it uh, and they haven't really experienced the machine. So I wanted to give you my one and a half year, 400 mile review of what I think of the machine, the good, the bad, and the ugly as the title suggests. Now before we get to the actual kind of meat and potatoes, I wanted to explain what this thing has meant to me, what has changed over the last year, what it's done for me, and things of that nature. The last year, as we all know, if you're watching this, this is currently 2021, it's August. Uh, it's been a tough year for everybody. The pandemic has not been easy on any of us. I don't care who you are, what you are, it's been rough. And uh, you know, between life events that are not so great that are happening for me, work, I got COVID, uh, kids, this and that, you know, I can keep going on and on. It's been, it's been challenging for sure. And this machine I will credit with being able to alleviate a lot of that. And that's a big deal for me. Um, so I wanted to mention a couple things on how I use this. The fact that it is basically a daily thing for me and, uh, and, and you know, why it's such a big part of my life at this point. So first and foremost, I'll say that this is basically a daily you know, not only therapy for me, but also means of kind of utilitarian um, transportation. Um, I go grocery shopping on it. I mean, I literally, I use this thing very often for a lot of things uh, besides just going out and having fun. So that's a big deal to me. I love utility. I'm very much a function before form kind of guy. Um, if you've watched some of my other videos, you kind of hear that in some of my other stuff. I love function. This thing has become extremely functional for me in my life. Uh, on top of that, just like motorcycling, I've been riding for 30 years. That's therapy for me. When I go out on the road, it calms me down. It's better than any psychologist would ever be able to do. This is the same thing for me. Uh, I snowboarded for over 20 years and, and snowboarding was a huge part of my life for a very long time, ever since I was a very young kid. And um, after I had kids, I haven't snowboarded in uh, nine years, unfortunately. So. It's been a huge kind of chunk of my life that went missing all of a sudden. And this board has also kind of helped me to rekindle that part of my life. The next kind of daily thought that I've had is that it's reconnected myself and my kids in a big way, right? Um, my kids are, you know, seven and nine. And let's face it, kids these days, especially that age, are glued to screens, especially during the pandemic. You know, what else can they do? They can't go outside, they can't do this, can't do that. What I did was I got them electric scooters uh, for Christmas and we all are now riding these electrics all over the place. And it's been super fun and a great way to reconnect with them. And we do that pretty much on a daily basis as well. So this thing is getting a lot of charge cycles every day. So the last thing I'll mention is, is just the, the, the fact that this has really helped to kind of crush the, uh, the pandemic blues. And I have to credit this machine for what it's done for me. It's helped me get outside. Um, when I'm not running or doing something else or riding the motorcycle, this is typically what I'm on to get outside and go do something. And it's been awesome. Uh, a good friend of mine who also has a channel, No Nonsense Know How, check him out, great channel. He also is into electric skateboards and he's been riding them a lot and we've been riding together. And it's just been a fun thing to just get out and do. So again, those are the four things that really are just, how and why I use it on a daily basis, and I gotta give the company credit for making a great machine. Now, let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. The first good thing I wanted to mention is that it is a US built product, which as you probably all know, it's extremely rare these days. Uh, I look around, even in this back room, there's almost nothing in here that's probably US made, besides maybe these uh, bottles of cider. The next thing I'll mention for a good is that it has very few failures, and that's likely due to the fact that it is a US built and designed product. They are very good at controlling everything in this country at their plant in California, and it is just a, a high quality product. Uh, I do keep a very close watch and ear to the kind of community, um, I, you know, on the forums, the groups, all that. I'm always watching and listening and, and, and watching other videos, and there are very few failures with these boards, extremely low actually. Are there injuries? Yes, 100% there are injuries, but I'll get to this later. 
Most of those injuries uh, are user error, 100%. I've experienced it myself. I've had one nosedive and it was 100% my fault. And uh, it hasn't happened since because I just, I watch what I'm doing and the board is well, ba well built uh, and it will warn you. So super reliable, well built. That's the second, the, the second thing I wanted to mention. The next thing I wanted to say is that this is an all-terrain machine. Uh, for an electric skateboard, PEV, whatever you want to call it, um, it, it's very rare to find a machine that can go on grass and dirt and gravel and things like that and not end up with you with a broken collarbone. This board can do that. Now I wouldn't go on like super rough rocky terrain, that might get a little squirrely, but like a, a towpath or um, you know a lawn, it's easy, it's no big deal on this machine. Next thing I wanted to mention is the fact that it's hands-free. There are no other uh, electric skateboards out there that are hands-free. They all have a remote you have to use to, to go forward and back, or to brake, excuse me. Uh, the fact that this is hands-free allows you to do so much more with this product, whether it's you know steady kind of videography or going and getting groceries like I do, going to get beers, you know whatever the case may be, um, it is a beautiful thing that this is a hands-free device. The next good thing I'll mention is that it's super carvy and maneuverable. Uh, like I said earlier, it totally feels like a snowboard to me. Um, I've been on plenty of electric longboards and skateboards. They do not feel that way at all. They feel like tugboats. They don't carve really. They um, they slowly turn, I will say, most of them. You know, I've even been on a boosted board, I've been on the high end stuff. I don't feel like they truly carve like, like a, a snowboard would. Uh, this product for sure does feel like a nice, you know, crisp morning corduroy carve on a snowboard. But again, it feels so carvy and so uh, back to my roots of snowboarding and I love that. Uh, the other thing is kind of in, in line with that is it's super maneuverable. So if you're in a city area or somewhere where there's people and potholes and this and that and stuff you gotta get around, it's far more maneuverable uh, than an electric skateboard. There's no need to kick the, kick the back and go around stuff or do a tight turn. I can turn this board around in, no joke, about two feet. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to get used to it to do that, but it, once you get good on one of these, it's easy to turn around in like two feet, maybe three feet, uh, once you, like I said, once you practice it. So you cannot do that on an electric skateboard without kicking the tail. So the next thing I wanted to mention is, uh, the last thing about the good, is that it has lights built in from the factory. That is uh, rare, actually. I, I don't really, uh, I can't think of any electric skateboards that have built in lights, maybe one or two, but it's very rare. And the reality is, it's kind of silly. It doesn't cost a lot to put LEDs in. It's a safety feature um, and it also allows for, you know, riding it at night. It just makes a ton of sense. I don't know why more people don't do that and it, it's been extremely useful for me. Like I said, both from a safety standpoint but also from just using the lights to actually go. Um, we'll end the good there because we're also going to use the lights for the start of our bad. All right, so let's get into the bad on this board. The lights kind of suck. Uh, if we're being honest, they, they're bright as hell for like uh, the brake light. You can see it from forever. But the headlight only throws light for maybe, I don't know, two, two feet, three feet. Uh, and so I can't tell you how many times I've been riding at night and a, a pothole will come out of nowhere uh, and damn near launch me off if I'm, you know, if I don't catch it in time. So um, just something to keep in mind. The lights are great to have, but they're not that good. The next bad thing I wanted to mention is the limited range. The pint is a uh, not eight, or excuse me, seven to eight mile range machine, right? And it, the good thing is they did actually, they were honest about that. I can get about eight miles out of this, no problem. And I'm 185 pounds, five foot 10, just to give you guys reference. So on normal terrain, yeah, I'll get seven to eight miles, no problem, it's definitely true. But that is still limited and they have built this thing so that you cannot extend the range. There are third party manufacturers out there that are building kind of backdoor pirate, you know, battery packs that you have to like kind of, uh, it's a little hokey, but it does work. You can extend the range, but it's, it's, it also voids your warranty and does a couple other things. So you gotta be careful with that. That's the one thing I wish Future Motion would have done for two reasons. One, we just want extended range. Two, it would allow you to pull the battery out if you had a swappable battery and fly on a commercial airliner um, legally and safely and all that. That would be awesome. I would love it to see the ability to, to fly with this board legally. Uh, and I would imagine it would probably boost their sales heavily. Uh, if you could bring this thing on work travel and whatever, wherever the, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, I think that would be a huge move on their part for those two reasons. The next thing I was gonna mention is the top speed. 
The top speed on this board on the Pine is like 14 miles an hour. The top speed on the XR is like uh, 18, I believe. And it, it, I'll say two things. Yes, it sucks. It's not very fast. You can't get somewhere in a hurry. I don't like that. It is a negative. I will also say though, I probably wouldn't want to go faster than that on this board because it does have a margin of error, right? If you nosedive uh, at 25, ugh, uh, you know, you're going to hurt something. You're probably going to break something. So I get it. I understand why Future Motion did that. It was a safety feature. It was probably a smart move um, to limit liability in lawsuits, but uh, it is a slower electric skateboard, PEV, whatever you want to call it. The next bad I wanted to mention is the fact that, for me at least, it's been a little twitchy to start, right? So on this board, there's a brain, obviously. It's smarter than all of us, and it uses certain sensors. There's a front foot pad sensor, and I'll show you exactly how it works, actually. So in order to start going on this board, for it to know that you're on and ready to ride, it needs to have, there's one sensor here that you can see, and another sensor there. So you have two sensors, as you can see, that I'm, I'm you know, hitting basically it needs to see both of them on like I have with my fingers right now in order for it to realize oh you're on here and let's go ride right that's that's how this board is one of the many things that this board uses to um, basically control it so once you're on and riding I think past like five miles an hour these sensors turn off they don't matter right so you're good to go you can do whatever and it doesn't matter it's not going to throw you off these are only used to start and what I've had issues with, and again, I'm not a light guy. I'm, I'm 185 pounds, five foot 10, you know, so I'm not like a little peanut on here. And it still, once in a while, will not get both sensors um, latched on. I don't know what you want to call it. So when you, when you start going, when you try to start going and both sensors, if you only have one on like that, it'll just toss you right off. It won't, it won't even start. It won't toss you off. It'll just, it won't start. And then you just kind of fall forward and you'll look like an idiot. So I have had issues with that. It, after 400 miles, yes, there are many less issues, uh, but it still happens even to this day from time to time. You know, once you're riding, this thing does a beautiful job of just keeping you balanced and you're fine. You know, I've, I've had people riding in five minutes that were like doing great. It's the starting that a lot of people have issues with. The last bad thing I was going to mention is that it is heavy as hell. It's also awkward if you know, look at the thing. It's not easy to carry. It does have a handle, which is great, but it's not an easy uh, device to carry. You can't kick it when the battery's dead like you can on a regular skateboard. Um, there's no like little handle and set of wheels. You drag it like a suitcase. You just have to carry the thing and it's not fun to carry. So when, when and if you do run out of battery, which I have done, I've carried this thing probably a half mile and it was not a good time. The next thing I was gonna, or the last part I was gonna talk about is the ugly. The things I really don't like about this board. The first thing I'll mention is the price. Um, you know, it has a US built price, right? The pint is $900, I believe right now, uh, maybe a bit more, it might be a thousand at this point. And the XR, I believe is $1,900. The, the XR does have a higher range, um, higher top speed, and it's a bigger board. Um, uh, but again, I actually prefer the pint. I've ridden the XRs and I, I, I like the pints better, but that's besides the point, the price is high. It's tough to buy something like this, especially also if you compare this to, uh, let's say, a mid-range electric skateboard like a Meepo, right? The Meepo, I think it's a version four, the V4 that just came out, has a range of 11 or 12 miles, has a top speed of like 28 miles per hour, and costs 450 bucks, I believe. It's a tough sale. When you can get a board for half the price that has more speed, more range, eh, you know, it takes some of the things I've mentioned that are good and kind of throws them out the window. It's, it's a better deal in a lot of ways uh, to go with an electric skateboard. So it's a tough sale, I, I get that. Uh, for me, the one wheel definitely provides some other aspects that I mentioned earlier that make it worthwhile, but point is, it's expensive. The next and last ugly thing I wanted to talk about um, is the, I don't want to speak disparagingly about one wheel, but their customer service and kind of, um, I guess, product support 
mantra. I don't really know how to say what I'm trying to say, but they're, they're almost like Apple. They don't want you to work on this product. If you have an issue, you have to send it back to them. I hate that. I understand there are reasons for that. I'm sure the lawyers and the penny crunchers and everybody else got involved and they said, hey, this is what we're gonna do. They're probably also protecting their intellectual property and their patents and this and that, whatever. I'm sure there's business reasons for what they did and I'm not going to, I don't wanna speak disparagingly, but I will say, I am a huge fan of right to repair. I don't care if it's a motorcycle, a car, a, a computer, uh, a coffee machine. I don't care what it is. If it's a product, maybe besides like a personal nuclear reactor, definitely don't work on that yourself. If it's something like this though, I should be able to open it up and replace a broken part uh, if I feel that I'm capable of doing that. You cannot. They do not allow it. They do not sell parts. They will not ship you a part. It has to get boxed up and sent back to Future Motion for any repair at all besides uh, a front sensor pad replacement or a tire. You're allowed to replace your own tire uh, and you're allowed to replace the sensors. They will sell them separately. Um, and that's really about it. And those are two things that, okay, fine, but they don't really, you know, that's not a big deal. If you have an issue though with your battery, with your um, control board, with, um, you know, whatever. If you have any other issue with the board, especially if you're out of warranty, God bless you, you're in for it. Um, it's gonna take probably three to four weeks to get the board chipped and back. Uh, it's If you're out of warranty, it's gonna be very expensive. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's something that I find unfortunate. Um, I, again, I don't wanna speak too harshly about them because I do like the company. I do think they've made a wonderful product. I think that aspect though is a huge negative. I really don't like it. I think it was a bad move. I think in some situations, at the very least, they should allow like local dealer support. At the very least, I don't know why they're not doing that. Future Motion, I hope you watch this and I hope you're listening. Swappable batteries and, and give us access to parts and local service. Um, it bothers me that, that you do that. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. That's the whole video. Um, I really appreciate it if you, if you hung out this far. There's gonna be some more stuff coming up for motorcycles, um, DIY products that I'm doing. Um, there's also a really cool electric skateboard that I'm going to be doing a video on very soon that I partnered with a company on. Um, and yeah, so stay tuned. Appreciate you. And we'll check you on the next one.